Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Lauren Godfrey, and I'm an artist. Uh, I work in sculpture and large scale public projects, um, and a lot of my work concerns pattern. I was invited by Mima to interview Jackie for a podcast series I've got called Pattern Portraits, where I invite people to select a, a series of five or six patterns that are special to them in their life. And a bit like Desert Island Discs, we kind of speak about each pattern as a way in to talking about somebody's life and work and their kind of broader personality, I guess, and their kind of world. Um, and through doing this, I've done one season and a bonus episode, which was Jackie's. I've just recorded another seven episodes that are going to come out soon. Um, through doing this, I've discovered that Patton is an amazing storyteller. It holds, it's one of those things where I started out, it seemed incredibly niche. Uh, people sort of gawped at it, like, why would you do that? <laughs> There's surely not enough to talk about. Uh, and I'm proving everybody wrong. <laughs> Probably not the people in this room, because you all agree that Patton is key. Um, but kind of understanding the way that it plays such a huge part in our world and our life. So it was fabulous to have the opportunity to speak to Jackie kind of more intensely. And actually it started off a kind of series of conversations that we've had, which have not been recorded, but we've met up a couple of times, had lunch. We spent a long time here together uh, during the opening period. Um, so in Jackie's episode of the podcast, we talk about, um, well, she spoke about the kind of importance of travel for her, um, intelligent risk taking and the visual beefy soup of the world around us. Um, and I think I chose this work because I feel like it kind of encapsulates. Well, firstly, it was the work that I just turned the corner and kind of my jaw dropped. It's a dream. Uh, <laughs> but I think I, I realized that it, encapsulated all these thoughts about how pattern and shape and form can kind of carry so much into a work and I think this holds it and along with these ones around it as well. Um, the more I've gotten to know Jackie I've understood her to be a quiet punk. Um, she has an amazing push back and I think you touched on it a bit in your talk about how she's evasive. And I read that as a kind of punk sensibility, a sort of slipperiness, a kind of pushback, a very gentle uh, resistance to be categorized and to be kind of hot, pigeonholed. And I think that that really, um, yeah, I think that really comes out through this work, um, this kind of pushing and prodding. One of the works in the show is called Appearances Can Be Deceptive. And I think that that sums up Jackie quite well. Um, she also spoke in our podcast episode about how she uh, often felt like the sort of little brown mouse amongst um, characters who presented themselves more boldly. And whilst you could read that as something um, that would position her in a kind of small space, it gives her an amazing power to be more insidious and more kind of creep into the corners. And what I love about this work and flaws in particular uh, is that they kind of do do that spread, spread, it's called spread. They kind of seep underfoot, they get into all the corners. It's like a piece of chocolate in your mouth. It kind of spreads to every edge um, of your mouth and you kind of taste it in different ways at different angles. Um, and I think, my personal obsession with flaws uh, goes quite a long way back. Um, one of my favourite artworks is uh, the floor at, IC at the ICA in London, which is by an artist called Jenny Moncur. And I remember going to the ICA as a young student, encountering this floor work. It's an inlaid linoleum patterned floor. And it's in all of the kind of liminal spaces in between the galleries. And you're there to see the shows that are on. But all I really wanted to do was sort of stand in the corridor and stare at the floor. And um, it kind of made me realise that there's a again, a power in this sort of getting into the corners where people don't expect you to be. So for my degree show work, I actually made a linoleum floor. It was called Seinfeld Shoe, and it was based on the underside of a pair of Seinfeld's trainers in the TV show. He puts his feet up on the uh, coffee table and there's this amazing pattern underfoot. And what I wanted to do with that work was kind of extract the bouncy 
the kind of jaunty walk of Jerry Seinfeld and spread it across the corridor uh, at the Slade School of Art where I was doing sculpture. Um, and by doing that, I kind of forced people that they kind of, they couldn't avoid my work. They had to come across it. They had to step on it. They had to interact with it. And I think um, it's one of the reasons I'm so, so drawn to this because it's got that kind of, that feeling about it where it's sort of, um, you can't walk on it, but you feel like you might, or that you know what that feeling would be like. Um, we're all a kind of product of our time. Uh, and this work was made in 1992. Um, at that time, I was only young. Um, but one of the reasons I think it really compels me is it sort of captures that moment in a particular way. I think the patterns that I'm currently drawn to now were formed back then, maybe a little bit later. It's like Habitat, Curtains, Laura Ashley, Rugrats, TV shows, sort of those graphics of the 90s. And I think that um, this sort of, ha you can't help but kind of gauge a particular time period through the patterns that, that you can see here. Um, pattern is something that dates quite quickly or it sort of goes through fashions. And I think that Jackie's got a really interesting relationship to taste and to uh, process of selection, which I'll go on to talk a bit more about in a minute. Um, I mentioned how this holds the richness of life, and I think Jackie has has spoken about how uh, these these works in particular kind of represent Britain um, as a sort of uh, a country of thieving, of sort of um, gathering things from all around the world and bringing them back, and uh, appropriation of pattern and the way that you can recognise motifs that have travelled across the seas. Um, over generations of colonialism and different cultures that are represented here. And I think that's a really interesting thing to kind of capture in a work. And it's a sort of, it's almost like a kind of um, scooping arm around the, the trends of the time or, or the lack thereof, I suppose. Uh, there's an interesting thing that she mentions, which quite a few people have said to me was a standout moment in the podcast. Similarly, I found it kind of fascinating. She speaks about how um, patterned carpet was a was the sort of um, product of the of coal fires and how coal was very dirty and it would spatter out. And so you had to have sort of patterned wallpaper and patterned flooring so that it absorbed that dirt. And I think um, she's sort of we joke about how it's kind of useful in clothing as well, where if you've got a child, you kind of spill things on you all the time, or you've got, as she described, a slick of sick down your back, gets quite well covered by a, a pattern. Um, and this moment where, um, where central heating came in and then pattern flooring became a choice rather than a necessity. And there's something interesting about choice, I think, in this work. Um, we kind of can't help but make associations to the particular things. For some reason, I have, I can't help but read a sort of European Union combination of blue and yellow here, or a kind of sickly pink in some of them. There's a sort of, each of us have a story to tell based on something that is within these. And it reminded me of a moment, thinking very viscerally about carpet, um, of a time when I was a child, um, staying at my grandma's house, I must have been about six, needed the toilet in the middle of the night, went to the toilet and didn't realise that the lid was down. My grandma had a um, carpeted toilet seat, you know, like a sort of flop, like furry toilet seat and one of those furry U shapes around the, around the toilet. And, um, and I remember being, I still remember the feeling of the sort of wet carpety stuff <laughs> and the kind of trauma of this moment but I think um, there's a sort of viscerality to carpet it kind of holds all the dirt if you think of like a Weatherspoon's uh, patterned carpet there are whole Instagram accounts dedicated to casino carpets and Weatherspoon carpets they've seen a lot of stuff over the years they hold these memories this dirt the trace of the people that have walked across them the kind of scuffs where they've been obviously these are much fresher than that, um, but they kind of speak to that sort of uh, usability and, and there's, a, there's a griminess that I really am attracted to. And I think 
when you were talking earlier, Penelope, about this, this, this sort of ugliness, I think what's great about this work is it's sort of one of her most divisive works. It was in that Guardian article about the show where um, it was about how uh, people were like, oh, I'm going to vomit all over it because it's so ugly. <laughs> I don't feel it's ugly at all. I think it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. But, but I understand that kind of push and pull and some of the best artworks are the divisive ones. Um, Uh, what was I going to say next? Yeah, maybe thinking about the making process. Um, so one of the things that I really love about this work is they take a really long time to make. Jackie's articulated how she would sort of make arrangements, leave them in the studio, turn them over onto their reverse overnight. So in the morning, she'd have to reveal them to herself and kind of learn to love it again. Um, or sort of she could see more clearly the dilemmas enclosed within the work. Um, she actually asked a friend to select the carpet swatches that she used so that she had a pile of carpet swatches that she then chose from to do this so that she kind of removed a level of the taste and choice making. And I kind of like thinking about that as a kind of roll of the dice or a sort of chance, like deferring that decision making so that you get a better read on what's, what's going on. Um, and so for today's talk, I asked Jackie a slightly cheeky question, um, which was, uh, would she dress me? Uh, so I sent Jackie some photographs of lots of items of clothing in my wardrobe and told her to combine them in whatever way she wanted. Uh, so I am wearing Jackie's selection. Uh, and what's really nice about it is they're all my clothes. It's all my stuff but it's seen through her lens and I would never have put these two together, but I'm so happy. And now if I ever wear this combo, it's the, it's the Jackie classic. <laughs> um, so I kind of wanted to embody the work somehow and, def and, and understand what it felt like to defer a decision in that way. And I think that um, there's a, a sort of, well, it says a lot about Jackie that she was really game for it. Um, <laughs> she immediately was up for it. Um, I also think that there's something so physical about this work. And it's one of those things where I almost salivate when I begin to talk about it, because I think that the inlay is an erotic environment. And I'll try and explain what I mean about that. Uh, I feel like the sort of rubbing up together of the materiality of the different patterns and the different pieces has this kind of intensity to it where you can't help but you can't help but know that the pat the color is deeper than the top surface it's not been painted on top and similarly in the way that these canvases are kind of combined each one is its own thing and then they're having a little flirtatious kind of frisson next to each other and I think that there's something really fun about the way that Jackie almost lays a punchline with the teeny tiny bits if you look carefully there's like just a little jot of the brown spotty stuff in amongst this little uh, menage a trois over here there's like something happening in these kind of moments of the combination and I think that that's really exciting and it makes for a very uh, vibrant and non-static work um, I also think the language of carpeting is quite funny uh, sort of the sh shag pile just makes me blush um, and, and I think it's so quintessentially 70s, but thinking about kind of car carpets have, a, I don't know, there's a something kind of dirty and curious about them. Um, Jackie told me a story about how there's a carpet shop in London where you choose your carpet. They, they suggest you take your shoes off in order to choose the carpet um, so that you're choosing it with your feet because that's how you'll be experiencing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I did consider bringing some carpet swatches and making you all take your shoes off, but I thought that might be a step too far. Uh, but you can imagine the feeling of the, of the carpet underfoot. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. The only other thing is that I always think that the best works of art are the ones that make you want to make uh, and that make you wish you'd made it yourself. Um, and I could pull up a chair and just sit and look at this for hours. Um, 
so maybe I will in a bit. But meanwhile, I need to get to the studio because I'm ready to get making. <laughs> so thank you very much.